when you talk, when you and I talk, you and I are bilingual, mm -hmm. we think about what we're going to say, and it's relatively independent of the language in which we're going to say it. When we, when we talk about, like, a, I don't know, let's say a mathematical concept or something, mm -hmm. the kind of thinking that we're doing and the answer that we're planning to uh, produce is not linked to whether we're going to say it in French or Russian or English. Chomsky just rolled his eyes, but I understand. So you're saying that there's a, a bigger abstraction that that's uh, that goes before language, yeah, that maps onto language, right? It's certainly true for a lot of thinking that we that we do. Is that obvious that we don't like? You're saying your thinking is same in French as it is in English. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Or is this like how how flexible are you? Like if if there's a probability distribution. <laughs> Well, it, it depends what kind of thinking, right? If it's just, uh, if it's like producing puns, I get much better in French than English about that. <laughs> no, but so <laughs> right, much right. Worse, is there an abstract representation of puns? Like, is your humor an abstract, like when you tweet uh, and your tweets are sometimes a little bit spicy, uh, what's, is there an abstract representation in your brain of a tweet before it maps onto English? There is an abstract representation of uh, imagining the reaction of a reader to right. that uh, text. Or you start with laughter and then figure out how to make that happen. Or start, no, figure out a, like a reaction you want to cause and, right. then, and then figure out how to say it, right? Okay. So that it causes that reaction. But that's like really close to language. But think about like a mathem mathematical concept uh, or, uh, you know, imagining, you know, something you want to build out of wood or something like mm -hmm. this, right? The kind of thinking you're doing has absolutely nothing to do with language, really. Like, it's not like you have necessarily like an internal monologue in any particular language. You're... you're you know, imagining mental models of, of the thing, right? I mean, if I, if I ask you to, like, imagine what this uh, water bottle will look like if I rotate it mm -hmm. 90 degrees, um, that has nothing to do with language. And so, uh, so clearly there is, you know, a more abstract level of representation uh, in which we, we do most of our thinking and we plan what we're going to say if the output is, is, you know, uttered, words, as opposed to an output being, uh, you know, muscle actions, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, we plan our answer before we produce it. And LLMs don't do that. They just produce one word after the other, instinctively, if you want. It's like, it's a bit like the, you know, subconscious uh, actions where you don't, like you're distracted, you're doing something, you're completely concentrated, and someone comes to you and, uh, you know, ask you a question, and you kind of answer the question, you don't have time to think about the answer, but the answer is easy, so you don't need to pay attention. You sort of respond automatically. That's kind of what an LLM does, right? It doesn't think about its answer, really. Uh, it retrieves it because it's accumulated a lot of uh, knowledge, so it can retrieve some, some things, but it's going to just spit out one token after the other without planning the answer. But you're making it sound just one token after the other, one token at a time generation is uh, bound to be simplistic. But if the world model is sufficiently sophisticated, that one token at a time, the, the most likely thing it generates is a sequence of tokens is going to be a deeply profound thing. Okay, but then that assumes that the, those systems actually possess an right. eternal world model. 